Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the uh, January 4th Inland Woodlands Watercourse Commission meeting. Uh, we have uh, three members present and three on, three on Zoom. Uh, can you guys hear us? Yes. Steve? Mm -hmm. Very good. Loud uh, and clear. Good. Um, is there any citizens uh, here or on Zoom? I make a comment about anything that's not on the agenda. Good evening. State your name, please. Hi. Yes, my name is uh, Keith Ainsworth. I'm an attorney from New Haven. Um, I have something that, that doesn't really specifically show up on the agenda. I don't know if it might be showing up in the um, correspondence section, but um, I'm an attorney who represents uh, James Zareski. Uh, at uh, 659 Southington Road. And I think he has raised, at least to the wetlands enforcement officer, um, an issue of uh, a, a, a permitted activity that was, un, that was not permitted um, at 711 Southington Road. And what I wanted to do was uh, uh, just, you know, uh, address the issues that I had raised in the letter that I sent uh, to the commission uh, dated January 3rd, that was yesterday. Uh, but I believe my, my client, Mr. Zareski, uh, uh, raised this, uh, I think, in the, at the previous meeting. And um, this is a, a fairly simple matter. Uh, the gentleman next door did some clearing and uh, within the 50 foot setback uh, from the regulated area, which is within your regulations, uh, uh, a regulated activity that should have been permitted. Um, and my client is just simply asking the commission to um, either issue a, a notice or at least a request to the uh, to the neighbor at 7-Eleven um, to uh, you know establish uh, the full width of the buffer with uh, native plantings. Just something to reestablish that uh, buffer area that uh, provides for uh, stormwater filtration uh, because he my client is down gradient. And receives the uh, the overage uh, the runoff. Uh, thank you for your for your comments. Uh, we, at this time, we have no no response. Uh, we'll because uh, we have nothing formally uh, from anybody. So uh, we'll, we'll have to go out there and take a look at it and um, figure out what's going on. And, and really, that's all we can ask. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Uh, if not, gentlemen, um, you have the minutes before you. Are there any uh, additions, corrections, deletions uh, you'd like to make? Um, Mr. Chairman, there was one item that was referenced in the minutes, and I believe Lisa brought it to, uh, brought it to our attention. Yes, I missed it. We had listed one of the items uh, as a public hearing, and it was actually scheduled as part of the public hearing is being scheduled. So we will make that correction. Thank you. Um, uh, other than that, um, if not, I'd like to have a motion uh, to uh, to uh, correct the minutes as, as presented. Can I second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, next, uh, I, need a, I need a motion to open a public hearing on application 21-12, proposal by Hydrangea House LLC to construct a retail structure with associated improvements within both the wetland and flood hazard zone on lot five, block 86, number 202 Mill Street. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Up for the, uh, say your name and. Uh, right face. Hello. <laughs> Fix the camera. Okay. Uh, my name is Ozzy Torres. I'm a professional engineer registered here. So you can get in Massachusetts. And uh, I represent uh, Sadie and his family. Ozzy, uh, are you? Would you be comfortable yeah, taking I, your mask off so people can kind I'll of read your lips? Like this. 
So that's yeah. fine. If you don't mind, because it's just it's kind of the tape and no problem. Um, we've got distancing, so I right. So basically, it's for the Hydrania House of uh, Flower Shop over on um, <laughs> Mill Street in Berlin, and um, and he's make, making improvements. Uh, he's going to try and take care of an existing. Uh, Encroachment on the wetlands, and with that, use that, that area for flood storage basically uh, by cleaning that out, getting rid of some material that should have never been there before. So, uh, the parcel is 2.26 acres in total. There are two lots, there's lot 202 and 212, and uh, both are combined in this proposal. Uh, Existing, there's a building on the parcel that's 80 by 40 feet. You can see it on our uh, on our survey. There's an existing building, 80 by 40 feet, and then we also have an insurance company building next to it that's approximately 35 by 23. I'm sorry, 50 by 35 feet in size, and then there's a small garage, uh, 35 by 23 feet on the, on the second parcel. Uh, all of these buildings, as you see, are presently out of the wetlands and even out of the wetlands buffer or a uh, 100 foot uh, upland review area. I'm sorry, we didn't keep it up. Uh, so these, these buildings will remain, and the proposal is to do other work around the other portions. The amount of uh, wetlands is about eight tenths of an acre total wetlands on, on the parcel. Um, the upland review area basically crosses across the parcel. Um, as you can see, drawn you know, I'm sorry. And, and nothing presently uh, goes into that upland review area except a corner of the existing parking lot. So the uh, existing site presently really doesn't disturb the water at all. Now the floodplain uh, elevation is at elevation 44, uh, which does cross on an angle and it does uh, come in across the existing park line. It does not touch the existing buildings. So they're completely out of it, and their elevations are definitely one foot above that flood elevation. So they don't uh, cause any kind of problem to the flood, uh, flood control area. Okay. If I could uh, take a look at the next plan. This plan is a demolition plan, basically. It just shows what we're planning to do is to take the existing pavement completely and uh, remove it and replace it with new pavement, as we'll, we'll show you as we go along. Uh, and, and in this one, you can clearly see that just the very corner of the pavement is within that upland review area. The other portion is right through here, which is the flood plate. Okay. Um, now the proposal is to build a new building that's about 50 by 40 and will be at elevation 47.5, which is three, about three and a half feet above the floodplain. So uh, it will be above the floodplain as it's done when it's finished. Uh, it is not in any of the wetlands uh, and it will be in the upland review area. So, Volume of material that has been calculated and included in our calculations. 
the, the new entrants were proposing is to come in. You saw the other plan that we had shown. It was only half of a parking side to this entrance way. And what we're going to do is put two parking lanes and the entrance is moving over a bit and then create a new uh, bypass a, a window to serve the flower house and then have a bypass by also there'll be a bypass lane for anyone who wants to get around that the parking will then be increased to the south um, and uh, to uh, compensate for the required parking for the new buildings uh, the zone Oops. All right. <laughs> that seen many years. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, okay, so in order for us to install this parking area and still not fill within the front plate, we're, we're putting up a retaining wall. And it's basically the shape of a U there. And the only reason we're going in here is to create more storage volume for, for the flood plane. So we can compensate for what we're filling in here or removing it over here. And on this plane, you can see the shaded areas. These are actual wetlands. Wetlands are on this side of that line. And these are areas that we will be removing material in order to remove that existing pipe and all the fill that was placed in here before. So all this material in here, there'll be a lot of excavation in there, and then there'll be a lot of excavation back here. But these are the only areas that will be disturbed for in the wetlands. And that disturbed area is a small amount. Um, it's right here. It's 4,518 square feet. It's shown on this plane. That will be disturbed. This wetland is actually not a wetland right now because it's it's uh, material that was placed there that was illegal and pipe as well. Now, what we are trying to do is collect all the storm water from the parking lots uh, and some of the roof drainage and bring it through a water quality unit then discharge it into the wetlands. We're also going to create a great pool here um, that has been um, noted by the soil scientists. Um, and uh, Mr. Logan has said um, in his report, he explains what will be uh, planted in that area for you know, renovation of the, of the waterfall. Now, we designed this splash pad and this other splash pad and they're shown in our calculations so that they can handle the amount of fall coming through up to the 100 year storm. So it's all been designed and it's all prepared and shown in the report. The drainage and environment calculation report that we submitted. Now, the excavation, what we're trying to do as far as the floodplain is concerned and drainage is to create enough storage volume that will compensate for the increase in runoff from this building and the additional parking. And by creating enough volume, we will not only cover the volume of this extra fill that we're putting in, but it also covers the volume of the storm flow. We generated hydrographs of the existing conditions for the whole site and came up with a volume of water. Then we generated, generated hydrographic runoff for the proposed conditions and come up with a volume. And it's all right there in our calculations that we submitted. And it shows that we have a surplus. When we're done, we will have an extra thousand cubic feet of storage to improve the floodplain. That's number one. And that should cover kind of increase in impervious surface or increase runoff uh, up to the 100 year storm. Um, so we're showing that there. Also, all the building floors are above the flood plain. Okay. Now, our plans also include 
erosion and sediment control in the package. Don't worry about it. Basically, we have all the requirements for erosion and sediment control down here, actually. So we have silt fence and uh, hay bales. All the catch basins are fitted with hooded traps. Um, and, uh, and also, the, like I said, the water quality unit has been designed and the calculations are all there for uh, specifically for all the impervious surface uh, and will function for up to the 100 year storm. Uh, I mentioned the retaining walls, the splash pads. In that set of plans are the cross sections so that uh, they could be checked and kind of seen so you can see that our calculations cover everything that I have mentioned and we've included it all in that report that you have um, for the site. Uh, I think that yeah, pretty much covered all of the um, impacts. Oh, I do have one other thing. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. In the drainage calculations, they asked us for a description of what we're I mean, I'm sorry, in the wetlands application. We asked for a description of what is being done. And I, I will read it back to you. The proposal is to add a new building and parking, walks, driveways, permanent drainage, utilities, and retaining walls um, to the site. And this is within your purview area. Uh, also, remove existing fill material and the pipe previously uh, installed in the wetlands. Excavate upland areas to mitigate the, the, the decrease of floodplain volume caused by the proposed improvements and install plantings as directed by the soil scientists. The, these disturbed areas, he has. Uh, in his report, a list of plantings that should be used there in his recommendation. Uh, George Logan, as you know, is the soil scientist. Uh, the nature of the volume of material to be placed and removed and transferred. The nature of this material is earthen fill and vegetation that was placed here. Approximately 1,610 cubic yards will be removed out of it. And then Parking lot fill and construction fill to be placed would be approximately 861 cubic yards in here. Uh, remove existing storm pipe, uh, 92 feet of storm pipe, existing storm pipe is going to get taken out. So, as you can see, the, the material, we're not putting anything back into the wetlands. We're only going to be working within the Ruby uh, area. Okay? And we've shown that in that, we are providing for flood uh, storage and actually increase the existing flood storage. And we've also provided for any increase in runoff by that much volume also added to this project. It's all in our calculations. I think that covers pretty much what I have to say. If you have any questions, um, I'd be glad to answer them. Uh, I don't know if George is with us. I'm here. Thank you. Great, thank you. Your question, please. Function of the pipe you were removing. Oh, I had the same, had the same the, question. It's like it was, was put pipe. there before the test the original pipe. owner wanted to use the area. So he put a pipe in so that the water could still transfer through and then use it, put piled dirt on top to use it as as usable area. That's what's the history is, is, is it doing anything? I mean, <laughs> history goes, I think it was back in the uh, early 60s, the, uh, the original, where the property owner at that time was a farmer. Right. Uh, he, was was looking, first, yeah, he was looking to expand the use of his property, started to install the piping um, with the thought that he could you know, pipe and channelize the stream right. from its connection on Mill Street farther back through his property. Uh, I believe he was stopped from doing that at that time. If you notice, they never made a connection right. to Wall Street, never went any further. Right. Uh, it's just there. It's, right. yeah, it's just there. And I thought farmers have a lot of rights in weapons, right? Don't they? Didn't they? To, to a certain degree. <laughs> 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 
It's my opinion that they could do anything. It's, it's a phantom training system. Uh, that. So that's why, if we remove that and all the fill on top of it, you're actually bringing back more weapons. And this will all, I'm assuming, with the planting that George has uh, submitted, he'll probably speak now. Mr. Mr. Torres, I have, I have one question, and I know that yes. the question was posed to me today um, from one of our members, and I didn't have the opportunity to chat with you about it. Um, question was along the lines, within our regulations, when we talk about the flood hazard regs, it states that the applicant uh, must certify that development based upon the proposal um, and requires the engineer, the, uh, the PD, to certify that the proposed plan will not increase the height of the flood in that area. Okay. Um, so I need to add that to the plan, or yes. submit a or I, I think a simple statement, perhaps oh, add to the plan. I would state that we do certify that it will not increase the flood flooding or the flood plan. And we we know that your stamp is on the plan. Correct. Your stamp is on the hydraulic report. It's essentially that's what you're stating. But I am just to keep everything clear. Okay, and I do. I'm all done unless you have more questions. Um, I just, you're, you're removing a lot of fill from that area. Yes. Um, how, you have I mean, idea how much and yes. where you're taking it? You're not, you're not using, you said it's not using anyone on the site, correct? No, absolutely not. It's all getting removed out of the site. Okay. We're not using any of this material to backfill in here because all the material we need is structural fill for right. the parking lot. And then we're removing material. It's all being taken out. Okay. So it's not going to be used anywhere on the site? No. Okay. And, and actually, George also asked us not to use any of this material for anything. Back to our Much of that material, how much of the cubic yards of material will be in the site? Okay. Uh, uh, natural fill. It's removed. It's said removed from the site. 1,600 cubic yards from the natural stuff and about 862 cubic yards from oh, no, outside that's real. So 1,600 will be coming out. 800. So it's about 800 cubic yards total. And you're putting all new topsoil in? And yes. Yes. There'll be lawns and topsoil we have done there. I'm sorry, the numbers are probably clearer in the report that you're looking at. It's all it's all the tone now. Yeah. The point here is still try out. We built one cell and try out something. Oh, I don't think so. A couple hundred. Yeah. Is that gonna be a little bit of 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 a little Bill, Steve, Rick, any any uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, not on my end. Thank you. Uh, no, no I, got, I got nothing. Yeah, I've got nothing either. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Got, guys, any? Oh yeah, George, you have anything to add to to this? Well, maybe just one little thing. Um, so you have two reports from me. One is the verification of the wetland delineation. I'd done this way, way back, years and years ago when Rod Hewitt was still with us and you, you all recall him, I'm sure. And so I redid this delineation in June and it pretty much is the same delineation. So there's a report on that. And then there's a secondary report is the typical wetlands assessment. I'm sure you've, you've seen it. Uh, one thing I wanted to emphasize and one thing I wanted to add and then I'm done unless you have questions. Uh, the thing that I needed to add was that I, I failed to include one thing. So the, the areas that we're mitigating, so there's both areas that are now going to be disturbed temporarily uh, in areas that are now uplands that have become wetlands. So we're going to have a net increase of wetlands. And in both those areas, I have a combination of seed mixes that um, we're putting two together, basically, uh, and we're hitting that area. Um, and one of the seed mixes has actually shrubs, which is a good thing. 
The one thing that I forgot to do, <laughs> just craziness uh, lately in my office, is to propose that when that seeding happens, depending on which time of the year is done, there has to be a, what we call a nurse crop. And this is, this is usually an annual seed mix, and uh, just one species, you, you know, you've all heard of barnyard grass or annual rye grass, or you can use winter rye if it's done in the winter. Um, and that has to be added to the seed mix at uh, a 20% by weight. And what that does, it quickly stabilizes because these other seed mixes that I'm proposing with a native species take a little longer to germinate and to become vibrant, whereas the nurse crops go immediately, provide instant stabilization, and then when they die back, the other stuff comes up. So that's the only thing I would add. George, do you think it would be best if, if you're involved with that at that time to ensure that the proper mixtures are in place? Sure, that'd be fine. That would be easy enough to do. Um, and, and George, uh, uh, just going back to our last meeting when we had talked about you know species out there, I didn't see anything about any type of habitat or anything like that in, in the report. Is there was there anything out there? Um, is there any? You mean as far as wildlife are concerned? Yeah, wildlife. Yeah. Yeah, they're all hidden in Phragmites. I couldn't find them. <laughs> so, so as you as you know, I would say probably what three quarters, if not more, of the wetland that's on the site. It's just a dense stand of uh, Phragmites. Yeah. So <clears throat> that in itself kind of limits the kind of wildlife. Now you're next to, an, to basically a, a road. So the closer you get to the road, the, more, the less wildlife there is. Now, the other thing I told you in the report is as you go back away from the site, off site, that's a fairly large system. It's about five and a half acres or maybe more. So I, and that's a lot nicer. It's got, forest, the scrub, shrub, et cetera, all off site. So that's where, if there's any wildlife diversity, that's where it is. Okay. Is that what you, we should have to worry about with, with the Army Corps or DEP or anything like that coming back? And no, we don't because the, the two things that have happened here is one, uh, the total impact in the wetlands is less than 5,000 square feet. So that kind of gives us out of a permitting situation. And we don't have any special habitat uh, types like a vernal pool, for instance, or, or listed species that will throw us out of that 5,000. So we're kind of squarely under the 5,000 for total disturbance, which is, which is good. So I don't, I don't foresee, I'm, I'm, let's say I'm 99.99% .99 sure we don't have to worry about uh, Army Corps or uh, Connecticut DEP for this one. Anybody, anybody else? Dave, Rick, uh, here. <coughs> Steve, Bill, anything, other comments, questions? Uh, nothing on my end. Yeah, this is Rick. I'm, uh, I'm good. Okay. I'm um, good. Jim, do you have anything? Um, uh, oh, you, we've talked about uh, adding something. Well, you can certainly take action to see if right. you choose right. to close the public hearing. And then we have uh, perhaps a couple of conditions. Yeah, with, with the CO. Okay, I want to close public hearing first. Uh, yeah. Can I have a motion? Motion to close. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, is there anybody in, in the public who has uh, any comments or questions for, uh, for the people here? If not, um, I'd like to have a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing 21-12 WF. You have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, now uh, we, we can take action, Mr. Gentleman, if if, uh, if you want to if you want to um, take action to either approve or deny. Um, like to have a motion, Mr. Chairman. I would just offer one comment. Uh, if the commission is so inclined to take an action to approve this evening, 
I'm, I'm suggesting a condition be added to the, uh, the language of the approval that would state all wetland mitigation and flood storage compensatory work be completed prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy on the new structure and that Mr. Logan or a similar um, soils professional uh, be involved with the actual mitigation work to ensure that it's properly constructed in accordance with his suggestions. So is that considered so removed and then make a motion? Well, is, is this agreeable with? Yeah. Yeah. That's Everybody's good? You got that, Lisa? Uh, Jill will give it to me. Okay. All right. Commissioner Rogan will make a motion uh, to uh, approve application 21-12WF with can the I, conditions. Can I have a second? Commissioner will a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Otherwise, uh, looks like you're ready to go, gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Happy New Year, guys. Very nice. Yes, have a good New Year. Happy New Year, yes. Um, our regular meeting right now, application 22-01WF, proposal by StanCon LLC to inform environmental remediation activities within both an upland review area and a flood hazard zone on lot 10, block 133 at 405 Berlin Street. Can you just give them half a second yep. to be able to, and I don't know who James. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good night, guys. Good New Year. Good night. Good night. I don't know. You may want to ask. If there's, is there anyone here this evening to uh, speak on behalf of application 2201WF, uh, StanCon LLC? Hmm. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can I can tell you that I had a voicemail message from um, the someone representing the applicant yesterday. Um, I tried to call them back today, and their mailbox was full. So, um, we, and they made no reference to whether or not they would be here. And we, we can't take action on this anyways. No, no, no. I would I would suggest that we table table it um, table it table the discussion on the application yeah. until someone's present. present right we really can't, can't even think any can we can't deny it right we really can't um so they're gonna have to wait another another couple months, another couple months yeah because we couldn't do anything anyways and uh the applicant's not here to represent yeah. themselves right now yeah. well, that's strange um so you need, you need a motion to table i would say table the opening of the application yeah. for another one okay can i have a motion to that effect Commissioner Rogan will make a uh, motion to table uh, the application 2201WF until the following month. Opening, opening, the oh, opening, the application. opening the application. Can I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, any other business to come before the commission? Is there a Correspondence, yeah, we, I guess. Um, we, no, we haven't really had any correspondence other than the correspondence that was referenced um, during the audience of citizens yep. um, from Attorney Hansworth, I believe it is. Um, I would suggest to the commission, and it's, it's your call on this, to uh, visit the site. Um, perhaps we can talk to the um, staff, can chat with. Uh, the property owner, and I know that uh, they had retained a soil scientist to uh, to discuss the situation with them. For the, yeah. Unless and the commission would you know, like to do anything else. That's well, I mean, we, we really have nothing to go on. There's nothing in front of us, just a letter from the from the attorney. Um, we have nothing from the soil scientist. We don't know what he's, you know. I, I would suggest that the commission members sooner than later visit the site yeah, um, before. Well, before we get some snowfall on yeah. it. Yeah. 
Gotcha. Um, everyone, you know, Bill, Steve, uh, Rick, if you, if, if you can get out there just to walk around, take a look at it, see what you think. And uh, next meeting, we'll discuss it and um, we'll go from there. Yeah, th th this is Rick. I, I did visit that site last week and I guess I was having trouble connecting and missed, I think, some of the first discussion about this. So I may have missed something. But what comes to my mind is um, they seem to be saying that there are, without doubt, disturbances in the Upland Review area. And I didn't really notice that. I might have to go back and look again. But it looked, you know, I wasn't out there measuring 50 feet from the wetland delineation flags. But I didn't really see that much had been done, it didn't seem to me, in the upland area. I, the owner was there and he was thinking about asking permission to, um, you know, landscape it and turn it into lawn. And, and maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. I did see the little arborvitaes that had been planted, but I don't know, I don't think I'd consider that disturbance of the upland review area that's just adding planting so i don't know yeah i guess um further discussion but that's that's my two cents at the moment well i think if, if we anybody you know everyone on the commission should go out there go out there separately don't go out there as a group we can't do that uh, but go out there walk around you know we've got permission from the owner to do this um just walk around take a look uh see what you think in the next meeting we'll come back and having more discussion on it. Uh, this is Bill Jackson. I have a question. Uh, I know this came up briefly during last month's meeting. And uh, from that meeting to the present, I've done, I haven't uh, done anything on it. I haven't visited a site or anything. So I just want to check in with um, <laughs> the town and the commission and to, um, just to verify where this project is uh, with respect to the Wetland Commission is to say, um, so um, my understanding, if I'm correct in this, Jim, that you have spoken with the property owner and the property owner has given permission for members of the, of the uh, Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission to, uh, to, to, to access the property and to walk the property at this time? Yes, you are correct. Okay. And, and, if, and if anybody go, comes out there, anything else, um, everyone has a, they should have a little card identifying who you are, if you carry that with you. So if anybody comes over to question you, show them the card and tell them you have permission from the owner. And I, so you can identify yourself with this, with the card from the town. Uh, you know, but take a walk out there. I'm going to take a walk out there, um, take a look at it and come back. If you have any comments or questions, we can discuss it next meeting. And Mr. Chairman, at this point, obviously, um, knowing that the time of the year that is before us, there's, it's not as if... Right. And, you know, talking snow for this weekend... Um, it's not as if any, you know, physical activity right. or, or movement of Earth should be taking place right. at this time. So we have time to, or the Commission has time to, right. to assess the situation and, and go from there. Um, anything else, Jen? No. Not at, oh. Um, one item. Um, I know that um, Lisa and I have spoken about it. We're just trying to get, get some feedback from the commission members if you'd like us to try to uh, try to um, secure the, the Board of Education meeting room downstairs in the future for the next couple of meetings. I think it gives everyone a little more breathing space if you know members of the public and or members of the commission have any concerns, you know, due to the uh, current uh, situation more broad that's that's before us so we're just throwing that out there if it's available i like it you know, you don't have i mean I, I mean i don't see um you know that's fine i don't see anything big coming in front of us mm -hmm. um you know uh um, you know we, actually right now we only have the one that wasn't here tonight looks like it's gonna be the only one on the agenda next month uh, as far as we know uh, but that's fine if you want to do that if, if you can lisa i don't know if you can if, if it's available we'll, we'll, we'll look into oh, it I'll give you an advance warning. Right. Yeah, I would be more comfortable in a in a bigger room myself. Um, appreciate you bringing it up. If it's if it's a, a big problem for you guys to arrange things that way, you know, much less convenient than I understand. But um, that's primarily why I'm a remote tonight. Okay. 
And I understand that completely, Rick. It's, you know, it's uh, stuff going wrong. You want, you want to be care as careful as you can. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, see. I, I see uh, young, unvaccinated grandchildren. And that, that's my primary concern. So do I. And I know what you're going through. Yeah. So okay, right. we'll, we'll see if it's available. Certainly, if it is, we will uh, try to schedule the next couple of meetings in that room. Yeah, sounds good. And hopefully things will improve over the next few weeks anyway. Awesome. Um, One question. Should, when we're working on these applications and we've gotten through with the public hearings, we were voted for approving the applications. If they submit any material to the to the this monthly meeting, it has to be two weeks before. So no, it does not. No, it it doesn't. The initial application. <clears throat> Our requirements are such where the initial application for, for an applicant to be scheduled to appear before the commission, all the information is to be submitted. I think it's 15 days prior <clears throat> to the upcoming meeting. Once, once the application is submitted and the clock started, um, the applicants will be submitting additional information at any time based upon requests of the commission. Up to the day before? Um, up to the day before. So when we look at the situation we had tonight with the hydrangea house, we opened a public hearing. If there was a question that came up on something and um, it required additional information to be submitted, the applicant has the right to do that. And the commission members can request it because the public hearing is still open. You're still receiving right. information. And if there was something in this that you didn't understand, you didn't like, you could, have, you could have continued the public hearing to next month. So they had right. time to right. 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 So the 15 days is really, it's the application deadline. Well, this was concerned about like attorney gotchas. No. Other than that, um, nothing else. Uh, can I have a motion to uh, close, uh, close the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, see you next month. It's I'm not sure the date. Uh, February 2nd. February 3rd. Oh, good night, everybody. Good, good night, 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 folks. Thank you. February 1st. Oh, February 1st. Yeah, that's the first? Yeah. Okay. I'll look forward to that meeting because that means we're all one of 28 days away from March. Yeah. yeah. All right.